Good evening. Welcome to Clear Creek High School. We appreciate all of you being here tonight. Um, we have a lot of exciting information to talk to you about tonight regarding our Latitude to Learn initiative. Um, a few pieces of housekeeping first. We will let you know that next door in the auxiliary cafeteria, we do have this same presentation in Spanish. So if that better suits your needs, you're welcome to, to hear the presentation next door. We also have um, the information packets in the acknowledgement forms back here in the corner. If you didn't get a chance to pick one up, those will be available at the uh, end of the presentation where you can also fill out that acknowledgement form online and pay your insurance here if you choose to do that. And if you need um, access to a computer before you leave tonight, we will have a lab ready to go at the end of this meeting where you can actually log on uh, to look at that acknowledgement form, fill it out, uh, but as well as set up a CCISD for me account if in case you have not already done that. So if you have questions about that as we move through tonight, we want to be sure and take care of all of your needs in regards to those, those issues. As you know, this uh, initiative was made possible um, due to the overwhelming support of our 2013 CCISD bond referendum this past spring. And we have a big portion of that, um, of that bond election that has gone toward this initiative, um, not only for the hardware, but also for some of the infrastructure that you're going to hear about tonight. So we appreciate your support of the bond referendum and supporting CCISD schools uh, like you do each and every day. We certainly appreciate you being here tonight. At this time, I'd like to briefly go over the deployment schedule. We are now in uh, phase two for Clear Creek High School. Phase one um, deployment was for Clearview High School, Clear Horizons High School, Victory Lakes Intermediate, and Clear Lake City Elementary. And those were some of the smaller campuses where we kind of did some smaller deployments first. And that's what you see in the first column, August of 2013. The highlighted column there in light blue is phase two, and that's set for this January. And that's where our ninth and 10th graders currently um, will get these uh, tablets for use. And then next year, we will deploy um, not only to other grade levels here at Clear Creek High School, but also to other grade levels four through 12 in the district in phases three and four. So for tonight, we're really talking about phase two as we talk about timelines, because that's what applies to us. But if you're here from another campus and if under a different timeline of any kind, we can certainly answer your questions about that too. At this time, to take over the bulk of the presentation is our Director of Learning Technology, Ms. Andrea Winters. Thank you, good evening. Uh, we really appreciate y'all being here, but before we get started into the heart of the presentation, we do have a short video that kind of outlines um, the Latitude to Learn initiative. Did you get your charger? Deploying the Dell Latitude 10 tablet to students across CCISD. Turn it on is the next step in the district's mission to lead the way in visionary education. We're going to be bold with this, uh, but at the same point in time, my, my message to teachers would be relax, take a breath. We're going to go slow with you. Uh, you're going to be able to utilize students who have no inhibitions whatsoever with the use of technology that might even teach you a few things along the way. And then you're going to do Adam graphing matching. By 2016, Latitude to Learn will ensure every student in grades 4 through 12 will have a tablet. What we're starting to see is a shift towards personalized learning. How do we use these devices so that students can learn at their own pace, learn their own standards in, the, in their learning style, um, and, and ver versus just everyone learning the same thing at the same time? All you have to do is come in here. Teachers and students will power up instead of powering down as they walk in the classroom door. This opens up more opportunities because it can bring the world inside the classroom and personalize that. And if we've done anything wrong in the United States, it's probably been to standardize our education for children to try to create the same thing for every kid. We can have an opportunity here to really personalize education and customize it to the standpoint where students feel like it is so relevant to their being 
that it energizes them to want to learn more. And I swipe in. Training opportunities guide teachers in the use of this powerful tablet. And we're looking for those Latitude to Learn leaders uh, who, who are uh, trailblazers in the field, mm -hmm. who are um, the advanced technology users, and we're going we're gonna to tap into that expertise that exists within our district. Professional development offers more opportunities for teachers to learn best practices for integrating technology into lesson plans. Where's your vocabulary list? On Blackboard. Very good. So you can pull it up on your tablets if you don't have your actual list with you. Because it is posted there. Personalized learning means students will be more self-directed and have more ownership of what they learn and how. One of our, our intents is to really work with teachers while they're planning units. And so as a group of teachers sit down, we'll have our, our, our TIS, um, coordinators, other people there with them, planning alongside them so we can say, okay, here are their, our learning outcomes. Now how can we um, make this really powerful incorporating technology? And make sure you get a good picture so I can see really clearly. The goal is to engage students through hands-on assignments regardless of the tools needed to teach the lesson. We are not expecting to flip a switch and one day walk in and see latitudes out with every student in every classroom every day. Um, we understand that this is a process and we are here to support teachers in their technology journey. It's not it's real, sorry. We're going to do that in just a minute. CCISD and Dell are collaborating to determine the most effective educational apps. We're looking for apps that match our beliefs as far as instruction. It would be very easy to go out and find apps where we have um, uh, flashcards and, and low-level learning. And, and there's a time for that. So what is parity? What's it look like? How do you recognize it? But um, we're, we're searching for apps that will um, be more open, that kids can use to create with, that kids can use to extend their learning, and not just something that's cool and flashy. For centuries, teachers have taught and students have learned. That won't change. It's the tools they use that will. You're going to the Stephen Murray website, and then you're going to, the first thing you'll do is add them basics. The strengths that we have in Clear Creek are unique. The slope between two points doesn't change. We have support put in for teachers. We have support put in for curriculum. Um, we have talented uh, technology integration specialists and talented teachers. So we're going to take advantage of our leaders and we're going to lead the way. So we've been getting ready for this and we've been planning for this for quite some time and one of the first things that we did is we wanted to make sure that our infrastructure could handle the instant access to information that students are going to need and so our director of system operation Reggie Johnson and his team have been hard at work visiting all the campuses making sure that the access points can handle a lot of traffic and upgrading those that cannot and so we're confident that when we roll out over 5,000 devices in January, that our infrastructure is going to be able to handle that. We've also had over 200 training sessions for teachers. And of course, a lot of the training sessions at the beginning were how to actually use the device. Um, so basic kind of how to's. But we've been partnering with Dell and Microsoft, and we've um, been teaching teachers best practices and exactly um, how to integrate this teaching tool into the curriculum. And we've also been able to um, work with curriculum and develop learning, professional learning development and technology. We've all come together to um, look at our curriculum. We know we have a good solid curriculum, but we want to see where we can kind of deepen that learning for students by using this um, technology tool. We've also had made available some online resources for students. And we thought this was very important to get done before ninth and 10th graders get their devices in January. So I have a team that's been working um, with publishers and trying to um, get all the different ways to access these digital resources in one spot. And so we've been able to do that and that is now live and ready for your students. And so um, they go to their student CCISD for me account. And if there's a digital resource available for the classes they're taking, all listed in one place for them. When we work with teachers uh, in integrating technology into their classroom, we use a, a matrix called the TIM matrix, and this serves two purposes for teachers. 
First of all, there's a reflective tool. Teachers can kind of take a, a quiz, if you will, to kind of see where am I on this technology journey? You know, am I really early in it? Um, do I, you know, maybe just integrate technology a little bit? Or am I out there, am I a trailblazer, and I'm already doing lots of fabulous things? And it's very important that teachers understand where they are so they know where they can go. And we know where they are so we can help support them in that journey and get them to integrate this technology for the best use of students. The second thing that Tim does is it provides videos of resources for teachers. They say, you know, I'm really kind of early in this. I really want to see something very transformational, real exciting in a math class then there's videos on there and that teacher can go in there and get ideas of what that might look like and then they can kind of adapt that for what best fits their classroom. So what can you expect? There's a couple things. The first thing when your student gets this is it's definitely a technology tool. We want your students to understand it is not a toy. This is something that they're going to use to deepen their learning and education to help personalize their learning. But I think one thing is that it doesn't replace the teacher in front of the classroom. This technology tool really is for the teachers to use to enhance that learning for students. And so it's still used under the direction of the teacher in front of the classroom to enhance learning. When your students log on to any computer on a campus, it goes through internet filters. And so it blocks some inappropriate social media type sites um, that we would not want them to access because they don't provide an educational value. Well, the latitude will come with that same filter. The unique thing about the latitude is, though, when your students take it home and they access your internet or Starbucks or McDonald's or any other public access, their internet is access is still routed back through our district filters. So even if they're off campus, they are still going through the same filters that we have here on campus. Now if you as a parent decide that you would like to have that filter removed, then there's a process you can go through so that when your students are off campus, then their internet is not filtered, but it will always be filtered when they're on campus. So we have an optional insurance, and the best way to explain this is it is a worry-free, worry-free insurance. And it covers, we really think that we've made um, the best effort to protect the investment that the taxpayers have made by passing the bond. And these latitudes come with an extended warranty plan from Dell. They come with an accidental damage warranty from Dell. Uh, they have a CompuTrace loss or theft or stolen um, recovery system. So we really think that we've done what we could to protect them. But you know, very similar to that new car that you buy that you think has that bumper to bumper warranty and then all of a sudden you take it in and that one part isn't covered or maybe it's not covered 100%, there's a percentage you have to pay. That's where this optional insurance would, would come in. So if there's an accidental damage and Dell only covers it a percentage of what it costs to repair it, then your accidental, the optional insurance would cover that percentage that wasn't covered. So that's um, something that's definitely beneficial. The accidental insurance is $25 per student per school year. For free and reduced qualifying families, that price goes down to $12.50. We know that sometimes even that cost can strain families, and so there's a certain number of scholarships available at each campus, and if you feel that you that's appropriate for you, just contact your administrators and, and they will fill out that paperwork for you. But it's important to know that no intentional damage is covered by either the optional insurance or by the Dell Protection Plan. So Dr. Smith has been working with a group of students and it's several students from all of the camp high school campuses in the district and he's been working with these students to identify digital citizenship and what our district feels digital citizenship means. And a large part of the Latitude to Learn initiative is not only to give students a device to help them have that instant access to information and deepen their learning, but we also want to make sure that they understand that their online behavior is has permanency 
and has repercussions. And the definition that the students came up with, I think, is, is pretty insightful. They define digital citizenship as, a digital citizen, as digital citizens, we strive to be respectful, responsible, mature members of society that are aware of the permanency and repercussions of our digital actions and identity. And when we set out as a campus or as a district to come up with digital citizenship lessons for your students, this is what we keep in mind. And we want to make sure that students understand that their online communication and actions does have repercussions and does have permanency. And your students have already been receiving some digital citizenship lessons. We want to make sure that they understand how important digital citizenship is prior to them getting the device, and those lessons will continue after they receive the device as well. Deployment day is going to be a little chaotic, but incredibly exciting. And so what that's going to look like is your students are going to be in an extended advisory class period. So they'll come down with their advisory teacher, and they will get a latitude checked out to them, very much like a textbook or a library book. So that latitude will go to them. Then they'll go back to their advisory class, and they'll receive a two-hour training session. And in this two-hour training session, they will get some basic how-tos, how to use the device, how to set the device up with their mail tile, Microsoft, and <coughs> educational Microsoft account, how to personalize the device, and also some more digital citizenship. And that morning that we deploy to your students, we will have all hands on deck. We will have technology integration specialists, we'll have techs, we'll have people here. So if your students have a question that they have lots of people here to help them, we'll have that staff stay in the afternoon. But what we found in phase one is really after the students go home at night and start playing with the device, they have more questions the next day. So we're going to have a staff come back the next day as well to make sure that your students understand how to use their device. Maybe they got home and something wasn't working right or something didn't set up right. We're going to be back the next day to support them on that. After that second day of deployment, there's going to be a help desk area in the library. And this help desk area will have somebody there at designated times during the school day. So after deployment, if your students have a problem, something's not working, something broke, it's missing, they have any type of questions at all, they can go to the help desk and have, and have help there for them. So we have some frequently asked questions that come up quite often, and our Chief Technology Officer, Kevin Schwartz, is going to come up and answer some of those, and I'm going to hand that over to him now. Well, I want to express my thanks for your attendance tonight, too. It's a wonderful investment you're making to come and work uh, with us to help uh, further education for your students. I know for many of you, this is an extra effort, and it's, it's greatly appreciated. We want to be respectful of your time as well. So we have a couple of phases for this presentation tonight for you. One is some frequently asked questions. So we'll try to anticipate some of these and answer them quickly for you. And we also have an open forum to follow where you can come up if there's still a question you haven't answered, we want to hear those and we'll give you our best effort to answer those for you tonight. Um, the most common one that I get right now is what's required before I receive the tablet? As a parent, what do I need to do if I want my, if I want my child to have this? We've made these processes as straightforward as possible. We need to have you review the responsible use guidelines. This is not just for latitude to learn, but for all of our technology in the district. And then we have you log on to CCISD for me, the parent portal. You'll, you can have the option there to electronically submit the acknowledgement form and uh, accept or decline the insurance. If you accept the insurance, then you can also make an online payment. Um, there's also a method where you can uh, work with the papers you have in front of you right now. If you choose to do this um, by hand, that's fine. And you can pay by check. We have folks here that can accept that as well. What we're looking for in this process is to gather that information as quickly as possible so that before January 23rd, we will know how many devices we need to have ready for students in this program. And if you want your student to participate, then we can have one for them on deployment day. So the next question that comes from that is, how do I get a CCISD for me account? If you don't have one already, because we use this for more than just the acknowledgement form, uh, it's as simple as going to our website and signing up. But if you need help logging in, again, we have people here tonight that can go through the whole process with you and make sure that you're, you're registered there. 
So after that initial euphoria of, hey, we can get a device, the next question is sort of the fear question, well, what happens if my device is lost? What happens then? Um, we have a lot of things we can do to help recover that device, and the, the, the strongest point I want to make is to have your student come tell us at the first opportunity. We don't want to find out about it two weeks later. If we find out about it within an hour, within a day, we have a much better chance of getting that device back for the student and, um, and having everyone have a happy outcome there. If, if uh, the device is stolen, if you know it's stolen, maybe out of a car or something like that, we would ask that you include that information on a police report so that we can engage law enforcement and other recovery system members to find the device and maybe help help you with the other side of that, that activity as well. So if you're thinking about the insurance and want to know maybe sort of the balance of what happens if I don't elect the insurance, what I'm responsible for, I want you to know that the entire cost of the device, the case, the cover, the, the tablet, and the charger all together is $541. And as Andrea mentioned earlier, I just want to reinforce that the part you'd be responsible would be the difference between what CCISD could recover from Dell or from other sources, and then the, the difference there is what you would be responsible for. I think in very few cases other than intentional damage would we see that be a $541 charge, but it would depend on the situation what the charge would be. So some forward-thinking parents are already thinking, wow, what are we going to do this summer? Can my student keep this over the summer? And we recognize this as an opportunity for student learning and, and perhaps a way that, that could be done, but we haven't made a decision on it, and it's actually purposeful that we haven't, because we haven't heard from you and what you think about this program or how it should be set up, and we haven't talked to all the students and teachers as well about how that, how that could work. But we're interested in, in hearing your feedback on that, and we want to make a decision to get back to you by March of this uh, coming year. When we get farther into this uh, program, Parents and students start asking how they can personalize the device and can I download apps to it? And then who owns the apps? And so our answer to this is yes. By setting up a Microsoft educational account, which will help with during training, the student will be able then to download apps from the Microsoft Store. The, the first question there is, if it's free, then that's something they could do. If it's something that has a charge, it would require credit card information. And so as you as parents have a chance to get involved in and decide, do I want to spend this $1, $3, whatever it is for my student uh, to have this, this application? Your students are not going to be required to buy apps that are part of the curriculum at CCISD. In other words, if we're saying we want all the kids to use an app, CCISD is going to provide that app. But if there's something that your student thinks would just make it just a little bit better for them and they want to invest in that, then it's an option that's there. Some parents have talked to me about internet at home, and for some reason, either they haven't gotten it yet, or they've migrated away from it because they've already you know, gone to broadband their cell phones and maybe um, not seeing the value in having it at home. So the question comes up, what if I don't have internet access at home? How will my student use the device? Um, I want you to know that the grades that the student receive are not contingent upon you having internet access at home. They're not going to be required to do something that requires a tablet or requires internet access. Um, and the device can also work very well without internet. It can store information directly on the drive or on a USB drive or an SD card. There's lots of ways to get information on and off the device. It might be typical for a student to work on a, a, a document at school, have it on their device, work on it at home, come back, save it back to the network, and work just fine. But if you have questions about um, the value of internet access or you'd like to see some options about discounted rates for internet access, there are some programs out there that can bring this down to as low as $10 a month um, if that's something that you're interested in. And we would just direct you back to your campus administrators and, and or anyone technology would be happy to give you information on that. I like this slide because we get this question from teachers and from parents. How will teachers monitor student use in the classroom? And I think it's clear from our presentation earlier that the classroom is going to look a little different. You may have noticed that teachers were in a different place in the classroom. A lot of them were not up at the front like I'm doing right now and standing in front of the screen. They were behind the students or they were over a shoulder or students were collaborating. And so this is something we've helped teachers with already and will continue to help them with is these classroom management skills, how to work with students when they all have a device, how to get them engaged collaboratively. And then remember, these are still CCISD devices, so we still have reporting mechanisms that we can use. If a student does go to an inappropriate site, we can report that, and the campus administration can take steps to get the student back on track. I like this slide, too, because it's been in here a while, and 
And when it was first in here, we didn't have the online textbook option, but as Andrea mentioned earlier, we're pretty proud to have it right now. This is a great program. Um, at secondary levels in the core classes, uh, where it's available from publishers, we have these electronic resources uh, available. Students can log in and get to them in one place. Publishers are kind of all over the map. Some have PDF, some have dynamic content, some don't have anything yet, but they know they have to get there. And so we have driven them to provide their information to us, and we went ahead and built the portal ourselves to help our students. We've got a slide that shows you a little bit how it looks like when they log in. They use their well-known student ID and their personal private PIN number to log in, and that shows them a list of their courses. And by those courses, as you can see, there are the digital resources, and it also includes a login and password if it's necessary, and instructions on how to use that resource. And then every time a publisher comes out with a new digital resource, we can just load it into the system and immediately have it available for all the students. This system also lets us be very efficient in how we assign out um, the electronic version of the textbooks to students, so that um, we're paying the minimum for these things, and the licensing is taken care of um, on the back end. So. Right, right product at the right time for the students. Another thing I like about this program, and in all phases of it, is we've tried to preserve every option we can for the parents and not make this something that's a requirement or a demand. If you're the parent, you know what's best for your kids and we respect that. If you have questions about this or you're at the point where you're thinking, I don't think this is right for my student or it's not right for them right now, the process is also as simple. You can go online, click to check the decline box, and then we will work with your student on alternate ways where they can still have computer access and, and access to digital resources in the classroom. Um, if you have questions about it, if you have questions beyond tonight or next week and, and it's, it's not mine to answer, but you want to talk to a campus administrator about what would work best for your student, please have that conversation. We're happy to do that. We're happy to try to find a way to meet your student's needs the very best way possible. We have another great resource this year that's new. We have a place for students to store their, their data in a home folder on a server here in the district. And I'll admit that's not new, but the access to that information from home or from anywhere is new. They can go to a browser, get to their home folder, and download their information. They can do that um, on Latitude, they can do that on a Mac, they can do it on an iPad, they can do it on any device that's web enabled. And so we think that's a great place for students to store their work and protect it. Um, this is a great skill for students to learn for college and career. This is a typical behavior in any, any work environment where you store things in a central location and then the, the corporation or the district or the, or the university takes great measures to back up that information and make it available to them wherever they need it. So we ask them to store on our each drive and then the students are all taught the, the link to go to to get it from home. Other parents are already thinking ahead about how their student might work differently with the device. We provide, the, again, the, the tablet, the case, and the charger, and we're pretty confident that's all a student has to have to be very successful. But if you think your student would be better off with a stylus, there's some great ones of those, or a Bluetooth keyboard, or maybe as you as a family even want to buy one or 30 more for your home, it doesn't really matter to us. But we made a site with Dell, uh, dell.com slash ccisd, where you can go and purchase accessories specifically suited for the device, and they're offered at a discount. Um, this is not something that CCISD makes a profit on. I think it's clear from Dell that they're trying to partner with us and offer discounts on these things. But you can rest assured if you buy one of these devices that we've seen and we know that it works with it. Other things may work with it as well. When parents ask me this question, I'm also very excited. How can I help? I think you've demonstrated your willingness to help just by being here tonight. And again, I thank you for that. Um, and that's bullet number one, which is stay informed and stay engaged with your student. This is, some, this is a project we all have to take on. Um, talk to your students about it. We're sending your student home with a portal into their learning. You can see exactly what they're working on. You can ask them to demonstrate right in front of you what they're learning and how they're working with things. You have a chance to look at that device and see what apps they're downloading and see if Angry Birds really is the best way to learn about physics or not. And you can have those conversations with your kids. So talk with them, stay engaged with them. We hope this is a way that, that helps you to do that. We're offering um, on our website at ccisd.net slash L2L tutorials and videos that we're giving to the students and for you. So those are resources. And if you're ready to have some of those uh, great conversations with your kid about digital citizenship, social media, how to be safe on the internet, uh, maybe as an approach to taking off the filters, a good start here is commonsensemedia.org. Great information um, from a nonprofit national organization about um, digital citizenship. 
case, was promised. That was our best effort to do all the frequently asked questions that we get all the time. But we've reserved time and, and space for um, you to ask more questions. We're happy to have them. I'm going to ask a couple of my colleagues to come up here and help us, Mr. Bachart and, and Andre Winters. And so if you have a technical question or a campus question or a learning question, we'll do our best to answer those for you right now. Yeah, and, and so we can share. If you would come to the mic, um, that will make it easy for us to pick that up for the video that's being recorded, and so everyone can hear you as well. Okay. Uh, my name is Chris Larry. Um, my question is, if you bring in an alternative device, right? So I'll say it's an Android device or an uh, Apple product. Are they limited to only accessing the H drive? Is there a Citrix receiver app that uh, you can run to connect to simulate the Windows environment on the Dells? Okay. Um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll try to answer two questions there. So one, that's a perfectly fine solution if you want to opt out of the device program and do a BYOD. We have that program in place at, at, at Clear Creek High School. Um, but we're not currently offering virtual desktop services um, for the devices. Good question, though. Thank you. Well, we have had a chance to do this presentation several times and anticipate some of these frequently asked questions. Maybe we call all yours. Um, so um, I'm going to let Mr. Bachart um, close this, but before I do, I want to say thank you and tell you the conversation doesn't end here. It's really just beginning. Um, continue the conversation with your student. Continue your conversation with your team at, at Clear Creek High School. And we thank you for coming out tonight. Well, and certainly, if you uh, have questions that you didn't want to bring up uh, in the open forum, we will be around after this meeting, and feel free to, to stick around and ask those questions, because we certainly want you to leave here with any and all information that you seek regarding this, um, this initiative. If you have not uh, signed up and created a CCISD for me account, you can do that as soon as we um, close here. And Mr. Hasso and Mr. Harper, who are in the back, can show you directly to our computer lab and take just a few minutes to do that while you're here. And at the same time, or immediately after you do that, you can go online and um, fill out the online acknowledgement form, pay for the insurance if you choose to do that at this time. Just want you to know that is available tonight. Certainly you can do that uh, on your own, own time also. Um, we appreciate you being here. We're excited about this, and we look, look forward to telling you more about it as we get closer to January. And as always, if you have extra questions, don't hesitate to stay around or give us a call at some other time. Thank you.